Welcome to Beside the Burn for Wednesday the 16th of March. Uh, Today we're continuing our series, 40 Unseen Women of the Bible. And in one day we are today going to be looking at five different women. Uh, So that uh, increases the number we were already at 41 because of the two midwives. And now we've got an extra four. So we're going to be hitting a total of 45 women and possibly a few more along the way. And today, well, the passage that we're going to read is from Numbers 27, verses 1 to 11. And this is really the sort of passage that you ask somebody else to read because the names are difficult to get your tongue round and they're difficult to remember. So we've got five women today that we're going to look at. Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka and Terza. Now, these names may not be familiar to us, and they are described as the daughters of Zelophehad, and I hope I've pronounced each one of those uh, correctly, but you'll, if you're following along in your Bibles, you'll be able to work out who I mean. And it's important that we have these five names because the whole point of today's passage is that these five women fear that their father's name and therefore their family name is going to die out because their father doesn't have a son and their father has died. And so therefore, whenever they marry, they are not going to be able to carry on their father's name And therefore, he's going to disappear out of the family line. And it's important to them because their family line is a very special one because they're able to trace themselves back to Jacob and therefore to Abraham and and Isaac. So whenever we read the passage, you'll see that they give a line of who their father and grandfather and great-grandfather and so on is. And they can go back to the tribe of Manasseh. And Manasseh was Joseph's son and Joseph was the son of Jacob and, and so on and so on. And so they can go backwards with the name and show how they are part of Israel and how God has blessed them. But they'll never be able to go any further forward. Because now their name dies out. So they come to Moses, all five of them, and they ask that they might be able to inherit their father's land. And with that, their father's name will be kept alive and in the records. And that is important to them because it traces God's blessing. It's not so much that they want their father's name to be held high and to be looked up upon. They want to trace the blessing of God to future generations. So let's read the passage together uh, and maybe stop along the way uh, and think about a few of these things as we go. So Numbers 27 and verses 1 to 11. Let's hear God's word together. And um, the daughters of Zelophehad, son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machar, the son of Manasseh, belonged to the clans of Manasseh, son of Joseph. So there, right at the very beginning, we have their whole family history summed up, but it's never going to go beyond Zelophehad. The names of the daughters were Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Terza. And they came forward and stood before Moses, Eleazar the priest, the leaders, and the whole assembly at the entrance to the tent of meeting, and said. So they've come to this tent of meeting where all of the leaders are gathered. They have come themselves as women because they have nobody else to speak for them. As we're about to hear, their father has died and therefore they have come together to seek this request. And this is what they said in verse 3. Our father died in the wilderness. He was not among Korah's followers who banded together against the Lord, but he died for his own sin and left no sons. So it's important that they get across this idea. Look, their their father has died in the wilderness. He wasn't a rebel. He didn't fight against God or the Israelites. Yes, he was a sinner like anyone else, and therefore he has died, but he has no sons. 
So verse 4. Why should our father's name disappear from his clan because he had no son? Give us property among our father's relatives. So the situation was, the legalities were, that it was the sons that inherited. Women were not allowed to inherit property. And we can see that in today's world still. Things have moved on greatly, but there are still occasions where a son is the one who inherits uh, uh, rather than the daughter. We even see it in the royal family up until recently that it was the eldest son that would become king uh, after um, the, the monarch, their, their parent would die. And therefore, we've got this situation where, where Princess Anne does not inherit, does not become queen, but Prince Charles becomes king. Now, that has now been changed. And this is what happens here. These women bring this request, and therefore, a new law is enacted and is put in place. But it's not done rashly. Moses does the right thing. He, instead of turning them down, or instead of saying yes, he goes to the Lord to ask the Lord what should be done on this occasion. So verse 5, So Moses brought their case before the Lord, and the Lord said to him, What Zelophehad's daughters are saying is right. You must certainly give them property as an inheritance among their father's relatives and give their father's inheritance to them. So the law is changed because of their request. Verse 8, say to the Israelites, if a man dies and leaves no son, give his inheritance to his daughter. If he has no daughter, give his inheritance to his brothers. If he has no brothers, give his inheritance to his father's brothers. If his father has no brothers, give his inheritance to the nearest relative in his clan that he may possess it. This is to have the force of law for the Israelites as the Lord commanded Moses. So the law is changed and they are now allowed to inherit. And it's not just a matter of greed here where they want to have property of their own. Owning the property in Israel was all part of of God's blessing upon his people. And if you own some of the promised land, then it showed that you had received blessing from God. And now these daughters, their children, would inherit their father's property and they would be blessed in that way. And it reminds us that we are part of a family. The church is our family. We have brothers and sisters within the church of Jesus Christ worldwide. And it's important that we remember the people that we meet with Sunday by Sunday and the people who are meeting across the world Sunday by Sunday are brothers and sisters. We're part of a family. We're blessed by God and therefore we should care for one another and look out for one another. We've been brought into the family because of Christ and therefore we've been adopted by our Heavenly Father as brothers and sisters and we have the rights as children to come to our Father and call him Father. So let's pray this prayer that Ross has given us at the end of the chapter. Heavenly Father, thank you that in Christ we too have been grafted into this family tree of God's covenant people, that we have been counted as heirs of the promise, that the, this history is our history and this story is our story. Teach us not to forget those who came before us, those who passed down the promises and those who taught us the gospel. As we honour them, we give all the praise to you, our Father and our God. Amen.